Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston. The hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, fast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have reached the end of an underground passage on the planet Mercury. Through their portable space phones, they hear Major Robertson up on the surface. Commander, how about coming back to the ship? I've got a strange feeling about this whole layout. You might as well, Robbie. We can't go any farther. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, there's a gate sliding shut. It's sealed in. A stone gate cut us off. Where's that noise coming? Commander! Commander, where are you? What's the matter, Hap? Major, the commander was right here beside me. And now he's vanished. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space football adventure, The Lost Dimension. Hi, this is Captain Dick Tufeld. Space Patrol is ringing your doorbell today with an extra special message from Commander Corey for all you Space Patrollers about the brand new sensational <laughs> Monoview Outer Space Helmet. The terrific space helmet the Commander wants all of you to have for your very own. Now just wait till you see it. And wait till you try it on. A whole foot high. It fits anybody. Looks like a robot head. And it has a swell one-way mirror strato viewer. You can see out, but nobody can see in. It sure is a neat disguise. Nobody can tell who you are. It comes in glowing space colors, red, yellow, green, and black, with two real-for-sure-looking oxygen tanks fitted on and a gleaming lightning flash hood. Now, here's how to get yours. Buy a package of Good Hot Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send the instant or regular Ralston box top and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Dimension. North of the equator of the planet Mercury is a low dome of rock known as Gombeen's Knoll, named for its eccentric owner, Boris Gombeen. His exact source of income is unknown, even to his closest associates. But he has a reputation for backing fantastic schemes and allowing himself to be imposed upon by men of doubtful worth. Even his confidential secretary, Mark Duncan, occasionally feels called upon to offer Gombeen a word of caution. It's not that this Dr. Farrandall is dishonest, Mr. Gombeen. He's wasting your money. Well, not to change the subject, Duncan, but did you hear about the Planet X Resources Project? Uh, yes, sir company must mean business. They, they've put up a two million credit bond to guarantee that they'll complete some basic developments there inside of a year. Well, I'm not interested in Planet X. I'm interested in that two million credits. Why should it lie there in the vault of the Terra Bank when I could use it? But the bank is protected by every detection and warning device known to science. Ah, yes, quite true, Duncan. Up to a point, but I would like to show you something. Come with me, would you? There. Well, this machine used to be in Farrandall's lab. Yes, his N-ray machine. Stand back a moment, Duncan. I'm going to turn the machine on. Now, watch that wall over there. What? Dr. Farrandall. What? what? <laughs> oh, you think I'm being... The Enray, you used it on me. <laughs> yes, I was just showing Duncan how it worked. Hope I didn't alarm you too much. Uh, it is somewhat of a shock. One instant I was in my lab, and the next time standing here. <laughs> you came right through solid walls and floors without being hurt? Exactly. And now, Duncan, do you see the enormous possibilities of the Enray? Yes. It's overwhelming. I don't know what to think. This experimental model has a limited range, a few hundred yards at most. However... A more powerful and way generator can move objects from one planet to another. Uh, how much money would be needed to construct such a generator? Oh, a prohibitive amount for any private person. About uh, two million credits. Two million, eh? Well, perhaps that amount is not as far beyond reach as it seems. Not nearly so far. 
Several days later, on the man-made planet Terra, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in a storeroom in the security lab in Space Patrol headquarters. Suspended on racks are several new type spacesuits, which Happy is seeing for the first time. Notice the helmet particularly, Happy. It was especially designed for space patrol use. Officially, it's called the Montevue Outer Space Helmet. It looks great, sir, except... Well, what about the face piece? Why, is something wrong? Well, it's got solid metal over it. How can you see where you're going or what you're doing? Maybe you'd better test it. Here, tie on the helmet. Mm -hmm. The face piece sure is metal, but well, what is it? Silver or polished in durian? Neither. It's a new plastic. Mm. Oh, a face piece you can't see through. That doesn't seem like a very practical... Smoking rockets, I can see through it after all. Then it's all right. Hey, it's wonderful. I can see you in the lab just as clearly. And hey, you must have made an adjustment on the helmet when I put it on. I have. Uh, take it off and see for yourself. Okay. Hey, it looks like solid metal again. That's the mystic spread of you, I have. That eyepiece is a unique feature of the Montevue Outer Space Helmet. The wearer can see out, but no one can see in. Hey, that's terrific. That would sure be an advantage on a, on a secret patrol. You better be. In outer space, the mystic Stratoviewer lens cuts out harmful ultraviolet rays. And this new helmet is going to be regular issue to all space patrols? Right, huh? I suppose Major Robertson has tested the helmets already. Yes, he thinks they're great. Oh, Robbie, I was just showing Happy the new Montevue outer space helmet. Commander, I've just learned two million credits have disappeared from the vault of the Terra Bank. Huh? Disappeared? How? Well, that's a mystery. No alarms were tripped. There's no trace of a forced entry. An inside job. It's got to be. Only three bank officials know the combination of the vault. Not one of them could have opened the vault without the knowledge and cooperation of the other two. This morning, the three bank officers entered the vault in presence of witnesses to look for a missing document. They found the document, all right, exactly where one of the officers had put it by mistake, in the Planet X Resources Project Vault. But the money was gone. Two million credits can't disappear without at least one clue, and we're going to find it. Elsewhere, back on Mercury, Boris Gombein places a stack of credits in his private safe. He locks it and then turns to his assistant. Well, here we are, Duncan. Thanks to the N-Ray, we've two million credits. I'm glad it's over. I could never go through that oh, again. Oh, there was nothing to it. Not for you, maybe. But to be in a surface car on the street one second, and to be inside a bank vault the next, to pass through endurium walls like water through a sieve... But think what we can do now with money enough to build a super-powerful N-Ray generator. What about Fernandel? <laughs> He won't know I'm using it until after he's constructed the big general. Come in. Oh, yes, Dr. Perrindo, what is it? I've been doing considerable thinking about further financing of my N-ray, Mr. Gaul. Oh, but that is my department, Doctor. All you need do is work on a technical area. Well, I know, but it occurred to me that the United Planets government might be glad to help out. Now that we have a working model. For the time being, it's best that I handle the financing my own way. The government doesn't need to know about your invention. But it already does. What? Some months ago, I sent a preliminary description of the N-ray principle to the security division of the space patrol. You mean they know about the N-ray? No, not the full deal. Uh, I didn't have it thoroughly worked out at that time. That was very foolish of you, Farrandall. Were you working here on Mercury when you sent that message? Yes, I had just tried. Oh, this hurts me deeply. I advise you to send another message immediately telling the security division that the N-ray principle was entirely wrong. Why should I do that? It isn't true, it works. Well, suppose some government scientist should go to work on your theory. If they independently produce a workable N-ray machine, where does that leave me? What chance would I have to get back my investment? Now, is that gratitude, Farrandall? Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way, Mr. Gumby. Without realizing it, I, I didn't say Biting the hand that feeds you. Well, I would pay benefactor to an impractical, self-centered genius. Please don't feel that way, Mr. Gamble. I, I'll send the message. I'll tell them I will tell. Hours later, in Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Buzz and Happy carefully go over the brainograph reports from the Terra Bank employees. Find anything, Happy? Oh, no, sir. None of these employees know any more about how that money disappeared than I do. Oh, uh, that reminds me. I was supposed to give you this copy of a message that was sent to the security division. Yeah, he gave it to me. Major Robertson. Yeah. Dr. Michael Farnsall, I'm being no sector L-24 Mercury. Professional pride prompts me to report the proven fallacy of my previous communication in regard to the transmission of solid objects by means of ultra-electronic vibration. I regret that my theory of the so-called N-ray operating in another dimension through hyperspace was announced prematurely. 
What did Robbie want me to see then? He didn't say. I guess he thought you needed to laugh. Well, what does it mean, if anything? I don't know. If any man who comes out and admits he was wrong is entitled to respect and consideration. Yes, sir. I'm going to see the doctor found all gets a reply the first thing in the morning. Now, let's go over this lab report on the robbery. The calm serenity that has reigned in Gombeen, Knoll, and Mercury has suddenly been broken. Boris Gombeen paces the floor of his study while his assistant, Duncan, futilely tries to pacify him. Oh, confound those stupid officials. Ordinarily, that money wouldn't have been missed for months. Doesn't matter, does it? There aren't any clues. Oh, no clues, eh? Except in the files of the security lab, that's all. You mean Ferrandall's N-ray theory? Yes, and the message I made him send. That'll start the Space Patrol to thinking, and it won't take them long to put two and two together. Oh, I don't think they'll associate the two events. Oh, you don't. Duncan, look here. They're faced with a robbery that couldn't have been committed by any known method. And then we come along and suggest a method, Ferrandall's N-ray, the possibility of transmitting objects through hyperspace. Practically a blueprint with my name on it. I don't see what we can do about it now. I do. We'll put the N-ray back in my spaceship and blast off the terror, and you're going to get Farrandall's original report out of the security file. Next morning, in one of the file rooms of the security lab, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy stand in front of a cabinet containing reels of microfilm. The chief clerk was right, sir. It's not here. But it was entered in the master journal. Farrandall still was received, microfilmed, and filed in this cabinet. Well, his hyperspace theory was no good anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Well, there's other information on that real happy. It's very important that anything is missing from these files. Well, maybe it's just a mistake. It'll turn up. Major Robertson doesn't think it was a mistake. Well, he did look pretty worried, but I thought it was about the missing two million credits. Happy's still here. He's going to be busy with the file. I thought I saw somebody close it over the next file. Yeah, but who could be in there? Waiting all the way. I'll see if anyone's in the next file. I get it. Well, I'll look through this cabinet once more. It's got to be here. Of course, it might have been filed under some other heading. Stay right where you are. Oh. I've got to get out of here. What's the matter with Gomby and the N ray? There it is. Last. Gombeen, what happened? What happened? Take it easy, Duncan. You're safely back in the ship. What took you so long? You left me in that file room for an hour. I had trouble with the resonator control. Now, did you get the microphone? Yes, I got well, it. Well, then what's the matter? You're white as moon dust. Commander Corey caught me. Just before you cut the N-ray on. Yes? I hit him with my gun. Hard. Well, if you finished him, so much the better. And now get hold of yourself, Duncan. We're blasting off back to Mercury. <laughs> We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. A man from the moon, a Martian monster, or a citizen of Saturn. That's you, Space Patrollers. Yes, sir, that's you when you put on your new Monoview Outer Space Helmet. Now, when you get it on, take a look in the mirror. Wow, you won't even recognize yourself. And nobody else will know you either because you can see out, but nobody, nobody can see in. Yes, sir, gang, that one-way mirror strata viewer is real magic. Space magic. Oh, think of the fun you'll have playing Space Patrol, equipped with Commander Corey's own official Monoview Outer Space Helmet. Just like a real spaceman, you're ready to go any place in space because your helmet comes complete with two real-looking oxygen tanks fitted on and a swell lightning flash hood. It's colored red, yellow, green, and black. Real space colors. And a whole foot high, and it fits anybody. Now, Space Patrollers, send for yours today. Buy a package of Good Hot Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send the instant or regular Ralston box top and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Lost Dimension. By means of a mysterious N-ray that instantaneously transports objects through space, Boris Gombeen has stolen two million credits from a vault in the Terra Bank. After the robbery, Gombeen learned that a microfilm describing the possibilities of such a ray was on file in the Space Patrol security lab. To recover this incriminating evidence, Gombeen used the ray to project his assistant, Mark Duncan, into the security lab. Discovered in a file room by Commander Corey, Duncan dealt Buzz a severe blow with the butt of his gun, and then the thief was whisked out of the lab back to Gombeen's spaceship at the Terra spaceport. Right now, in the file room, Happy has discovered the prone figure of Commander Corey. Commander! Commander! Ah, where are you? Here in the rear file room. Hurry! 
What happened? The commander's been hurt. Somebody slugged him. We were in the other room, and the commander thought he, he saw this door swing shut. He went to investigate, and then I heard the sound of a scuffle. Who did it? Well, I don't know. But well, you must have seen who it was. No other way out of this room. Look at the Brighton agent. Where is the guy? Where did he go? He certainly couldn't hide in here. He couldn't have sneaked out the door behind me. And if he had, I'd have seen him. Well, I think the commander's coming around. Well, you better get him to the infirmary. Yeah. Yes, sir. I have. Lovey. Right here, Commander. Hap and I are going to take you to the infirmary. No, no, I'll be all right. Look at that fellow go. Commander, you're sure there was somebody in here? I ought to be sure. He slugged me with his gun. No, be pooping, huh? He's not here now. There's no way he could have escaped. Well, well, there was no way for that microfilm deal to disappear from the files or for the two million credits to vanish from the bank. He's right, Major. Any one of those things occurring by themselves is crazy, but when maybe added together, they mean something. Yeah, but what? Suppose there is a ray that can project objects, even people, through walls, and suppose there was proof of that ray in the files. Would that solve all our puzzles? Well, all except why we'd get a message saying the ray was impossible. Well, someone's very anxious for us to think it's impossible. Even to the point of using the ray to remove evidence that it exists. How else could it have been removed? I admit the ray's most unlikely, but it explains all the facts. It gives us something to work on. Well, where do we begin? With this Dr. Farendall? Right. Bobby, gather all the information you can on Farendall. Then you and Happy and I will blast off the Mercury. Out in space, Boris Gombeen has plotted the shortest trajectory between Terra and Mercury. Then, with the problem of astrogation out of the way, he turns to Mark Duncan. I wish we knew for sure whether or not you finished, Commander Corey. What difference would that make? Except to put us in a worse jam with the Space Patrol. No, no, that would give us a break. See how that microfilm disappeared would remain a mystery. But if he's alive to describe your escape from the security lab, well, then somebody is sure to investigate Panadol. Well, then why head back to your place on Mercury? Leave Panadol around to blab everything he knows? Besides, the two million credits are at Gumbin No, You don't want to leave that fortune there, do you? Not if we can get away safely. Oh, surely we can. Remember, we've a weapon the Space Patrol is powerless against. The N-Ray. How can you use it as a weapon? You'll see. I'll need a little instruction from Farendall first. Yeah. Suppose he won't cooperate. Just leave that to me. Now, stop worrying. When we get to my place, we'll carry the N-Ray machine out of the ship and set it up for my study again. Above Mercury, sir. And we're right over the latitude of Gombe Knoll. All right, Happy. Maintain the rate of descent. Yes, sir. Robbie, what's the setup of Gombe Knoll? Well, there's no atmosphere shell, Commander. He used a tunnel powered drill and chiseled himself a mansion out of a small hill. Passages can be entered on foot through the airlocks if we're lucky. Get out of space suits, Happy. With the new helmet? Right, the one of you out of space job. Robbie, you stay in the ship and we land and discourage anyone who tries to leave the knoll. All right, Commander. Meantime, in Gombeen's study under the knoll, Gombeen and Duncan struggle to set up the N-ray machine as Dr. Ferrandall lies bound to the floor, helpless beside them. A viewscope screen reveals a space patrol ship setting down at the foot of the knoll. Now look, Duncan, two men in space suits getting out of the ship. Isn't that machine ready yet? I think so. Here, I'll try it. Something's wrong. All right, what's the trouble, Ferrandall? What are we doing wrong? You'd better tell us quickly if you know what's good for you. Yeah, you're in the jam with the space patrol, too, you know. They're right up to the passage airlock. Now, come on, Pat, and don't tell us how to work this ray. What are you going to do with them? We'll lift them up as high as the ray will take them and then cut off the oh, power. Shut up, Duncan. Pat, and don't listen. I'm running this show. All we want is a chance to escape. Tell us how to start the end ray, and I promise not to go through. Yeah, okay in the passage, half. Huh? Open your helmet face plate. All right, Commander. Hmm. The passage branches off to the left here. Which way do we go? Yeah. Take the widest branch. Straight ahead. Make sure to keep your suit's face going on so Robbie can hear. Yes, sir. How is everything in there? All right, so far, Robbie. Any sign of anybody from your position? No. I don't like the looks of it. Well, it looks like you took the wrong turn, Happy. The passage comes to a dead end here. Hey, Commander. How about coming back to the ship? I've got a strange feeling about this whole layout. You might as well, Robbie. You can't go any farther. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, there's a gate sliding shut. It's sealed in. A stone gate dropped and cut us off. What's the rockets, Commander? Where, where's that noise coming from? Com Commander, where are you? What's the matter, Hal? Major, the Commander was right here beside me, and now he's vanished. A fraction of a second after he vanishes from the sealed passage, 
Commander Corey suddenly appears in Dom Bean's study. The pulsating sound of the N-ray fades, his vision clears, and he looks into the muzzle of a blast gun. Stand right where you are, Corey, and get your hands up. We only got one of them. Oh, perhaps it's just as well for the present. The other one's still sealed in the passage. Now, Corey, I'm going to turn off your suit spacer phone and don't move. There. I assume you're Boris Dombeen. Yes, that's right. The pilot the machine there. He's the one who slugged me back at the security lab. And it was a pleasure. Enough of these formalities. Duncan, keep Corey covered while I focus the N-ray. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to transfer me to the control compartment of Corey's ship. Yes, that's right, Corey. I'll take care of that pal of yours so fast he won't know what's happening. You aren't going to leave me here. Oh, no, of course not. You can bring the money when I space upon you from Corey's ship. Corey, take off your spacesuit. Come on, make it snappy. Watch him closely, Duncan. I am. All right, reach over and cut on the N-ray. It's all focused. And then cut on the space upon. Okay. See you later, Duncan. I'm watching you, Corey. Then he's taking off that spacesuit. Duncan... Why don't you quit before you get in any deeper? Yes, Duncan, listen to Shut me. up, Perrinol. Gambin and I are running this. Commander, believe me, I had no knowledge of how they were using my Andre until just a short time ago. I said shut up. It isn't going to do you any good to spill your insides to Corey. Gambin to Duncan. Gambin to Duncan. Come in. There you see, he made it. Duncan here. Nice work, Duncan. The Andre bunked me down right behind this pager, and I had him cold on the deck before he turned around. What's next? Now listen carefully. You bring the other space patroller up where you are. I know how to focus the N-ray down the sealed passage, don't you? Yes, Gambi. Now, when you get Corey and his pal out of their space suits, blast them. Then you and Farandol put on their suits and come to Corey's ship. What about the N-ray? Leave it there. With Farandol in our hands, we can have an N-ray that can really shove things into line the way we want. All right, you know what to do. And when you come, don't forget the money. All right, Gambi. Give me about ten minutes. Nothing out. Now, Corey, keep your hands raised. And if I see one move out of you while I'm focusing this ray machine, I'll let you have it with this blaster. And remember, if I make a slip with the ray, something will happen to your partner down in the passage. <gasps> Smoking rockets. Hey, where am I? Gee, Commander, how... Just drop I... that ray gun, cadet. Keep your hands up. Do what he says. Yes, sir. For all a man who's so nervous, he leaves the vertical rectifier control out of bias on an N-ray, he's sure to be triggered. Huh? What's that? Go ahead. Overmodulate the whole hyperspace coordinate synchronizer. Colonel, what's he talking about? What's wrong? I'll show you. Oh. Let go of that blaster, Duncan. And... Hey, nice going, Commander. That ought to hold him a while. We've only started, Happy. We've got to get Tom Bean. He's in our ship waiting for Duncan and Farrandall. What about Major Robertson? Tom Bean sneaked up behind him on an N-ray. Now listen, Happy. Here's what we're Oh, I'm glad you're coming out of it, Major. You're just about to see something quite spectacular. What are you talking about, Gumby? Duncan is bringing Farrandall out to the ship now. He just shoved him out of the passage airlock. All right, you must stand up if you want to and take a look out the viewport. Just don't cry uh, anything. Remember, I have a gun on you. Major, somewhere under that knoll are your pals. And when Duncan and Farrandall get aboard, I'm going to blast off. And then you'll have the pleasure of seeing your space patroller buddies blasted with their own ship's space torpedoes. Now, listen, Gumby. You can't do that. Give me a chance. Oh, shut up. Look out there. I guess Duncan's had a little trouble with Farrandall. Uh-huh. How can you tell? Well, the one in front has his hands tied behind him. And Duncan is carrying the money. And good, now he's opening the outer hatch. Nice work, Duncan. Put the money down and then take off your helmet and enjoy the show. I've... Well, that face plate's covered with metal. How can you see out of it? Oh, it's easy when you know how. Uh, Corey, that's right! <laughs> Man, for a while there, I thought all three of us were done for. You're nearly right. Open Happy's helmet to help me untie his hands. I added the rope to make it look legitimate. Yeah, you'll need two. With those Montevideo outer space helmets on, I didn't know who was in those suits. Thanks, Major. We lock Don Bean back aft. When it happened, I'll go back to Duncan and Faradon. Yeah, when we left, Farandall was begging us to destroy his injury. He was? Why? It occurred to him that somebody might get hurt. You know, uh, something tells me he may be right. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Did you hear that, Space Patrollers? Did you hear how the sensational Monoview Outer Space Helmet 
Save the day today for the Commander, Cadet Happy, and Major Robertson. That's right, Dick. It's the finest piece of equipment ever developed in the Space Patrol laboratories. And that's why I want all you Space Patrollers to have a helmet just like mine. It's a whole foot high. Makes a wonderful disguise because that one-way strat of viewer lets you see out, but nobody else can see in. Has two full-size oxygen tanks and breathing tubes printed on and a gleaming lightning flash hood. And here's the biggest surprise of all. You can get this terrific new outer space helmet for just 25 cents in our Ralston box top. Yes, just 25 cents. Now listen carefully. Here's Captain Tufel to tell you how to get your Monoview outer space helmet. Just buy a box of good hot Ralston. Then with your name and address. Send 25 cents in coin and the instant or regular Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy, helpless from the effect of a paralyzer ray, are in a lab ship out beyond the Jupiter orbit. Sure gave us a stiff charge with that ray, Commander. It isn't even beginning to wear off. Yes, every second we have to lie here, Rinker and Fetz are getting farther away. And what's that? That equipment over there, Happy. The equipment? But, but I disconnected it. Rinker must have hooked it up again. When that electrical charge builds up, this whole lab ship will be blown to pieces. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Wistful Wizard of Neptune's Moon, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverick. Other players were Lawrence Dodkin, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on America's most heavily armed fighter interceptor, the Northrop Air Force Scorpion F-89D. In a moment, we'll hear from the test pilot on this plane, Bob Love, Korean jet ace, with a record of six MiGs in six weeks. Primary job of the Scorpion is to protect our country from invading aircraft. Speed more than 600 miles an hour. Weight 20 tons. Now, Bob Love recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. You know, a fellow has to be in top condition to test fly a fast aircraft such as the Scorpion. And that's why I always make it a rule to sleep well and eat well. So, for breakfast, I pick a cereal like Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. They're chuck full of energy and really taste good. You'll like them. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Bob Love, Bill Housen, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. And here's big news. Inside of checks, you now get a thrilling new Space Patrol trading card. Flip them, trade them, collect the whole set of 40. Free Space Patrol trading cards inside of rice checks and wheat checks. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for Armed Forces Overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.